This beanie told my sweet bad, but she can't give hats, so I don't snap back. See that? What do you think that is? It's not a caramel latte. It's not a frappuccino or a mochaccino or a, uh, not a French vanilla. Hold on, let me get let me get a better angle here. It's definitely not English breakfast. I wonder if listening to Chinatown music for three days straight happened to make anyone else horny. I don't just mean like mildly, I mean like You've just taken six Iagras. Not that I've ever done that. Not that I ever would. I've taken... <laughs> I've taken... Uh, Vitra. I, I conned... <laughs> I conned my doctor into giving me <laughs> Vitra back in high school. True story. So what's your problem? said I can't get it up he said get it up this time I was like 15 years old I was seriously fucked in the head now that I'm not fucked in the head now I was just more fucked in the head at that time I mean I'm sorry, but to go into your doctor and manipulate the doctor into giving, like... Sometimes I just wonder. Yeah, I do. I just wonder if the doctors even care. Or if they just agree to, like, like you know, whatever the patient says. Like, oh, I'm having this issue. Here's a pill for it. Or, what are you in here today for? Well, I'm in here to get this. Here you go. And it's like, did you even want to question that? Or test for it? Or Not that he could test for ED, but really, like, really. I've never in my life, in my life, in my life, <laughs> Heard of a person with ED at 15, at 15, <laughs> grade 10. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is just wrong. You know? That if that actually ever were to happen to someone, I will tell you though, the pills the pills did work. Oh my god, did they ever work? But they're not Chinatown. Chinatown works a hundred times better. It's just like this soft, melodic harp. It's literally just like it's like angels just playing a fucking harp 24-7. And you feel like you're in heaven. You feel like you're floating. You feel like nothing else matters but that goddamn harp playing on the TV. And yes, I just did get YouTube premium YouTube red just yesterday or two days ago. I got a free month to come out and then on the 15th the next month I gotta pay. It's a, uh, it's 11.99 a month. I'm not sweating it. I was paying 13.49 a month for Xbox Live and I canceled it. Not that I couldn't afford it, just I don't use it anymore. Like, I just got a Chromebook and it's dope. The thing is fucking balling. So I go on there and I'm just on there. I don't. Okay, I thought. I thought someone came to the door. Anyways, I, uh, I don't know why I shared that. Just a really weird, just a really weird share for me today. But there's got to be, on a more, speaking generally, like on a more worldly level here, I'm not talking about myself. I'm just talking about life in general. There's got to be a correlation between music and feelings. There, there really does, because this isn't the first time that I've changed how I felt just by listening to music. I call it, I call it music therapy. It's part of my holistic healing practice. But sometimes you get hit with an unexpected curveball. Everything goes to shit. And you gotta start from scratch. You gotta start building you gotta start building your stack again. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's there's nothing there's no shame in that. And I have no issue sharing this on this channel because I know that 80% of the viewers is male. I know that 80% of the viewers out there can relate to this. Except for maybe like, maybe like one or two percent people that are just, they're just, they're, they're robots. They're, they're not, they're not active. <laughs> yeah. They're just not real. They're not real people. They're fake people. I can't stand fake people, really, though. Like, I get, you know, make a joke, okay? Make a joke once in a while. But don't live in a delusional fantasy land of cupcakes and square pans and photo albums. Like, live in reality. Live in the here and now. Be in the moment. And don't let anything get you down. Anything. Like, I made a joke on someone's page, on someone's YouTube channel. I was like, you know, I said this, I said, 
because some of them don't even read the comments properly. Like I said, I am the worst. That was literally, my comment was, I am the worst. I am literally the worst. And she private messages me and goes, like, what the fuck are you talking about? You think I'm the worst? Blah, blah, blah. Like, what is wrong with you? Is it because I do this? <laughs> because I'm like... It shouldn't matter what other people think you. And did it ever occur to you that I could be joking? Like, I don't even know who you are. And I just find it so amusing. Like, these ghetto hoes will only talk to you if you have a problem with them. And I stand by that. Like, if you're cool with them, if you like them, if you're attracted to them, they want nothing to do do with you but the second you got an issue with them they're right up in your grill who the fuck are you talk to the hand mama ain't home and then they're right back out there you know on the next one i just don't i don't give them any gas whatsoever Because they don't deserve it. They just don't. Call me a womanizer. <laughs> Call me a chauvinist. No, I don't care. Hold on. No, but like seriously, on the topic of ghetto hoes, like I'm talking about like just nasty, trashy, basically like hookers, hussies, all kinds, I got all kinds of names for them, but ultimately what it boils down to is they're just, they're just trashy, just trashy individuals. They have no self-respect. They, they're, they're very, they're incredibly rude. They're, they're just not very nice people overall. They may, you know, they may have a nice body or whatever. They may have a sexy ass, but they're just, they're just mean girls and they're immature. So, yeah, I have no idea why I commented on that person's page. In reality, I just, I have no business commenting on people's stuff anymore. It, it, it never works out well for me. It always turns into a, a pissing match or a war of words, like, pfft. I'm not trying to get into that with anybody not that i can't hold my own in the ring you know not that i can't do that but i don't want to i'm not interested in that anymore I'm not about that life I got a 512 gigabyte memory fucking card come in anytime within the next 40 days. So I'll be able to shoot lengthy, <laughs> lengthy videos. Without fear of running out of camera space, like, I got about 20 gigabytes right now and I can film for like 40 minutes. With 512 gigabytes, I could just like, could literally just film all day, 24 hours, do 24 hours, like a day in the life of Kingpin. What would you all think of that? Everyone's just like, uh, I don't, don't really care, bro. Well. <laughs> You're gonna fucking care after I put up the video and you watch it, you're gonna be like, God damn, who is this guy? I want what he has. People will get jealous of your success in this world. They want you to do well. 
They want to help you. But the second that they find in their mind that you're doing better than they are, they want to eradicate you. They want to chop you down and cut you down. In order to catch up. The problem is that they don't realize by that point it's too late. They're just grasping at straws. I've been there, done that. I've been jealous. I've been jealous in relationships. I've been jealous toward other people that I don't have relationships with. It's not a good thing. Jealousy is not love. There's nothing loving about jealousy. A little bit is okay. Competition, whatever. But to just live in that squalor of death called jealousy, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because it eats on you, plays on you. You start comparing. You start having a complex, a self-image complex, like uh, maybe I'm not good enough or self-pity comes in. How did this happen to me? How did I get stuck in this shithole? And they're all out there living la vida loca. You know, how does he have three beautiful women in his bed and I'm stuck you know with Pamela Anderson you can't think about life that way my friends you're just stuck you accept it at that point that it's never going to get any better and that you somehow are supposed to be someone you're not or someone else is supposed to be you when really they can't. Life doesn't work that way and life's not fair. I first heard that from my sponsor. I was not a happy camper when he told me that. I didn't want to believe it. You would say to me, Andrew, life's not fair. I would call or complain, you know, complain about the weather, complain about my quote unquote girlfriend, complain about people at the meetings. I was, I was just a, I was a chronic complainer. I, I would complain about everything. It's okay, you know, it's okay to complain every once in a while, to vent, to let off some steam, but to just always be complaining about every little thing and always like looking for things to complain about, like, you know, Magoo with his hat and you get your op uh, octacle or whatever they call that, the one-eyed uh, glasses or whatever, the monocle, and your magnifying glass out and start searching the ground for clues as to what you could complain for or complain about. Life's not that bad. You say, find one thing to be grateful for. Just one thing, and I say, I can't, I can't, I can't think of one thing to be grateful for. And he would lose his mind 
when I said that, he would say, you've got this and you've got that, you've got this. And you and I would say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not grateful for any of that in this moment. How I'm feeling and how you're describing my life is not the same. It's absurd. But believe me, after I spend some time talking to him and listen to him, things really did start to change for me. I started to think about life on a more positive level. I stopped complaining so much. And I started living life on life's terms. <laughs> That's a good thing. Just as Andrew don't want to live life doesn't mean that life's going to stop being lived. The world don't revolve around me. I may think it does. Sometimes, <laughs> but it really doesn't. I may think they're talking about me sometimes when really they're not. I may think that people are laughing at me sometimes when really they're not. I tend to have a much higher view of self-importance than other people may have uh, at times. Yeah. I tend to think I'm a lot bigger than my britches. <laughs> In certain moments. Anyways, I've said enough. I gotta get out of here. This is Kingpin. My name is Andrew. You can call me Dr. Andrew. You can call me Kingpin. You can call me any or combination of all three. Yeah. I'm gonna get out of here for now. Before you go, subscribe. Leave a like, leave a comment, share the video. And recommend the channel to some other people. Yeah. As we approach 43K. How would ever happen? Be glad. Let me say this before I go. Let me share this one time quickly. People ask me this all the time. They say, how did you get 40K? Like you, of all people, how did you get 40K? And I'm like, just stop talking so much and start busting your hump. And you'll get 40K.